Good morning. I am so grateful to be with you all this morning. I am a very big fan of Pastor Cheryl, so it was very easy to say yes when she reached out to me to be with you all today. And I was mentioning to Pastor Cheryl this morning that anybody who is adjacent to the United Church of Christ knows about this church and your long legacy of being committed to doing God's love and justice and radical inclusion in the community. So it is a real gift to get to be with you all this morning. Would you be with me in a moment of prayer? <clears throat> Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Melt us, mold us, fill us, use us. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us. Amen. When I was six or seven years old, and this is an indication of what a difficult child I was, I asked my mother if God was a woman. My mother's response was, absolutely not. And I thought to myself, my mother has taught me that women are very important. I wonder why she thinks that. So I asked, why don't you think God is a woman? And being the mother of a six or seven year old, she said, if God were a woman, he wouldn't have invented mud. <laughs> I had trouble finding the right passage for this morning, partly because it's Mother's Day, and the voice of my mother in the back of my head is about mud. I wanted to preach from the lectionary. And the reason I feel very passionately about the lectionary is because for those of you who have friends who are at a Lutheran church or a Catholic church or a Methodist church, they're all using the same passage today that you are. And so you can say, hey, in church, we talked about this part of the scripture. What did you talk about? And you can do the work of theology, of understanding God together ecumenically. I care a great deal about the lectionary, except for this Sunday when all of the passages were bummers. <laughs> I was talking with my boyfriend who is not very active in the church and I said, I'm really having trouble figuring out what the passage for this Sunday is going to be. And he said, well, tell me about one of them. And I said, well, the gospel text, the one that often gets used, is about the Holy Spirit. And I have to say, this one makes me a little cranky because it is as if the gospel of John took away from us thousands of years prior where the Holy Spirit was female. And my boyfriend said, you mean Jesus grew up knowing the feminine divine, knowing that the Holy Spirit was female. That feels really important to me. And I was like, gosh darn it, leave it to the unchurched to actually understand the Bible better than we do. <laughs> so it is thanks to Nabil that you are getting this particular passage. You may already know that throughout the Hebrew Bible, there is this notion of the Spirit of God, and it's referred to either as Sophia in the Greek, which translates to wisdom, but is in the feminine form in Greek, or Ruach, the wind that passes across the earth. Ruach, the wind of peace, also in the feminine form in Hebrew. You may also remember that in the beginning of the book of Genesis, God says, we will create humanity in our own image, male and female. 
we will create them. That reminder that all of us across the gender spectrum are made in the image of God because God is so full and multiple and rich that no one gender can capture God. As I was thinking about Genesis and what it says about God as mother, father, parent, my beloved friend Bentley mentioned to me that in that passage where it says that God stirs over the waters, that in the Hebrew, it actually translates to broods. Not broods like sullenly, but broods like a mother over her chicks. So in Genesis, we get an image of God as mother gathering God's creation into family. I learned as I poked around on this theme that the early Christians, most of whom were Jewish followers of Jesus, understood the spirit as female. In fact, they often talked about being born of the Holy Spirit, of a mother. In early texts like the Shepherd of Hermas, the Gospel of Thomas, they talk about the Holy Spirit as the mother who gives birth to and cares for us all. I'm struck by how that framing of the spirit was slowly taken away. I have a working theory, I cannot prove it for sure, that it may have been because in the early church, women had a lot of power. And this was counter to the ways things were supposed to be. It made the church stand out against the Roman Empire, who had the power to destroy it. And by reining in the notion of the female divine, it might rein in the power of women and help the church go under the radar and not be destroyed. That's a generous reading. Some of my friends would say the men wanted the power back, and so they took back the Holy Spirit. <laughs> I want to give us a more generous reading of people wanting to survive an oppressive empire. But either way, the Holy Spirit began to get changed so that we were left with a Father God, even though the Bible had frequently talked about God as mother and father, and with a son, even though Jesus referred to himself in terms that also referred to himself as feminine as well as masculine, and a male Holy Spirit, or at best, in some translations, a Holy Spirit that had no gender. I find myself wondering on this Mother's Day what that means for us as followers of, Je of a Jesus who worshiped the Holy Spirit as mother, who talked about God not only as father but as mother in the same way the Hebrew scriptures did. I think some of you may know, and I would wager there have been Mother's Day sermons in this sanctuary on the original Mother's Day where Julia Ward Howe declared in 1870 the original Mother's Day to be a day to end war. She said, arise all women who have hearts, whether your baptism be that of water or of tears. Say firmly, we will not have great questions decided by irrelevant agencies. Our husbands shall not come to us reeking with carnage for caresses and applause. Our sons shall not be taken from us to unlearn all that we have been able to teach them of charity, mercy, and patience. We women of one country will be too tender of those of another country to allow our sons to be trained to injure theirs. That original Mother's Day spoke 
of a God who mothers so deeply that God does not want to see the destruction of God's beloved children. I find myself thinking about the Holy Spirit as mother today through that lens. Now, in today's scripture, although you can tell I think that John got the gender wrong, Jesus does describe the Holy Spirit as someone who will always be there for his followers, even after he has gone on. It's a reminder that we will not be orphaned. We will not be left alone. We will be loved. As we talked about in the litany this morning, some of us didn't have mothers or fathers who were always unconditional in their love. Some of us still need to be mothered and fathered. For that reason, I love that our faith reminds us we will always have a parent to comfort and hold, to advocate for us, to support us in hard times. God, our creator, Jesus, our friend and brother, and the Holy Spirit, our mother, give us a family we can always count on. I have friends who have written beautiful books about God as mother. If I were not a guest preacher, you would have just gotten one of these as your sermon, but I'm going to share with you so that you can add them to your collections. Mother God by Teresa Kim Pekinovsky, which simply illustrates all the ways that God gets referred to as mother throughout the Bible. She grew up Church of Christ. She is here for a fight with people who are biblical literalists and say that God is only father. She has the receipts. Uh, so she talks about God as a mother bear, as a hen brooding over her chicks, uh, as a lurking leopard. All of these images of God as tender and gentle mother and fierce and ferocious and protective mother and as comforting mother in our lives. And the other book that I think is lovely is Dear Mama God by Deneen Akers, which is simply a thanksgiving prayer to a God who cares about the fact that a child is grateful to God for their friends and for the sun that warms their face and for the stuffies that they get to sleep with at night. I love this image of a God who cares about the things that sometimes we think only mothers care about, although everyone in this congregation knows parents of all genders are invested in the things that their children are grateful for. I wanted to share those because I was talking with a good friend of mine who recruited me to her youth group many, many years ago. I gave her daughter a copy of these books, and my friend said, oh, I guess for people who aren't very evolved, you have to think of God in gendered terms. So I guess that's fine. And I remember saying to her, when we were little kids, we didn't see too many representations of ourselves in the church. And even if you know that God transcends gender, and I believe that God is inclusive of all genders, there is something special about a little girl getting to see that God is someone like her that I think can be transformative. If God is mother as well as father, if the Holy Spirit is male and female and more, I wonder if on this Mother's Day, God is calling all of us to tap into our own mothering spirits, every one of us, at a time the world needs mothers who love fiercely enough to fight for their children's survival. Perhaps God is inviting all of us to allow ourselves to receive the mother love of the Holy Spirit to strengthen us 
for the great mothering work of love God has ahead for all of us. May it be so. Amen.